Hi everybody and uh, welcome back to another video on my channel. Um, before I get into today's subject I just want to say a big thank you and wish a very warm welcome to all my latest subscribers to my channel. In the last couple of weeks my subscriber count has shot up and it's to do particularly with my Morse Tutor uh, project which I created and it was featured on a couple of sites. So I thank you for coming along to my channel. I hope that what I have to share you and uh, my knowledge and uh, experience is of use to you. Um, and uh, the comments I've had so far from that video in particular have been really, really lovely. So thank you so much. Please keep them coming in. Um, I wake up every day to new emails, <laughs> new comments, um, new uh, new tweets, in fact. So thank you so much to, to all the, the, the kind words that you've got to say about it. I will be doing a follow-up video to that one in a few weeks' time. Um, I do have plans for that project, and yes, I am making a kit for it. So uh, that will be available, but more details to come in a few weeks' time. Anyway, today's video. Surface mount components. Um, I've been staying away from them for quite some time, so um, I thought today would be a good video to do an introduction to surface mount devices. Um, how people like me who've got shaky hand and pretty bad eyesight can actually get on with them. And, uh, and I'll show you a couple of projects which I'm building at the moment. And, uh, and in fact I'll build one with you today um, of uh, some good surface mount components which are a good introduction into the, uh, the whole world of surface mount. So anyway, let's get and sit down and uh, let's crack on. So some of the projects that I've been building of lately have all been through whole components. Um, that means the component physically fits through the circuit board and they're of a certain size that people like me with some pretty shoddy eyesight and some shaky hands can deal with. You can see the component values, you can read the numbers on them and uh, it's not a problem. Surface mount are generally a lot smaller, they fit on the surface and I've always steered well, well clear of them. Um, because I shake, and, uh, and if I was to swap hands, you'll see instantly from the camera how much it's shaking. Um, I shake quite a lot, and I've always been put off because I find them too fiddly, and I'm having to touch them, and because I shake so much, it usually ends up in disaster. And to be honest with you, if you're gonna spend a few pounds on a kit at surface mount, and you know you're gonna fail just by hitting a couple of resistors, there's just no point buying the kit. I did get a kit from um, Kanga Products a few weeks ago, which is um, all surface mount components. And I really started to think seriously, maybe it's something I should investigate and see if I can actually deal with. So um, I had a look around and I've come across a technique which uses hot air, paste, and very little touching of the components. And I'm gonna share that with you today. Um, I actually built this. It's a surface mount um, based dummy load and uh, it's a good introduction to surface mount and uh, perfecting your technique. So let me get down to the, uh, the bench and we'll start going through it. So I had to buy myself a new soldering iron anyway and uh, as I was looking around for the, the soldering iron or the solder station I came across this one um, across eBay and it's an 852D plus it's made by many different manufacturers. It's essentially the same box. And this one cost me 50 pounds. And what's good about it is that it has uh, a normal soldering tip. It has a hot air station. It's temperature controlled. Um, it came with a stand and 10 spare tips. And generally it was, I thought, quite good value. I don't think it's great for soldering every day, all day, but for a hobbyist like myself, I think it's absolutely fine. Um, it switches on and heats up really, really quick. Um, if I just turn the solder station on, that's the uh, temperature I've got it set to, and you can wind it to whatever you want. So let's put it at 331. And then you'll see it heat up really quite quickly. Now the uh, hot air station, um, that came with several nozzles um, and uh, let me show you that there, it came with several nozzles on the end and, uh, and it also comes with temperature control here and uh, airflow as well. 
um, and if I show that to you, you can hear it switching on. And I've got it at 207 degrees, and I usually keep it between two and a half and three on the actual airflow. Now, of course, once you've got your soldering uh, station and uh, you've got your components, you obviously need some solder. And this is the one I'm using here. This is a solder paste. It's uh, lead based, I believe. And uh, it's uh, just a standard solder paste. Again, I purchased this online and this cost me six pounds. Um, and there's a lot in here and uh, it's surprisingly heavy as well. When uh, you're not using any of this, keep it in the fridge. Um, it lasts a lot longer and apparently doesn't go off. Um, but don't make the mistake I made and pull it out the fridge and start to try to use it because it's just too cold to work with. So get out of the fridge uh, at least a couple of hours or even half a day before you're going to start to use it. Um, and that way it warms up and it's a lot easier to use and uh, you don't get any issues. Um, when it's in the fridge, it stays in a, in a bag like this and you can see I've got a humidity indicator. It came with it, um, and uh, for six pounds again, I don't think you can worry. I think there's more soldering in there than I'll ever use. And a couple of other things which are always useful to have around is one of these, is a flux pen, or indeed just uh, a bottle of flux um, and some cotton swabs. Um, that comes in really handy for when you need to reflow any of the solder. And then finally, good equipment to have around is just some uh, isoprop alcohol. Uh, again this is readily available and uh, that's always handy to have around as well. Now for actual tools for doing the work I'm going to be using tweezers like these. Um, these are readily available again you can buy them anywhere in fact I think I picked, picked these up from Maplins um, and I was given a set as well very kindly by um, a good friend of mine. Uh, so I'm going to be using some tweezers Blue tack is the only other essential thing to hold the board down whilst you're using it and, uh, and a good magnifying glass. So that's the kit. That's all we're going to need to use to build everything. This is what we're going to end up with, I hope. So let's crack on and show you what we get. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the board. So it's just a case of spraying some isoprop alcohol over the board and give it a good rub down and uh, this is for demonstration purposes only I have already cleaned it but it's quite difficult to do when you're holding a camera as well and that gets the board nice and clean ready for us to uh, start pasting up okay so I hope you can see it okay um, I've got it at an angle which I think the camera will be able to pick up and uh, and that's as far in as I can get it with it staying in focus so I hope what I can show you here um, is of use I might just follow up with a couple of um, up close pictures so now the time has come to start actually pasting up the board and what I'm going to do I'm just going to do 10 components at a time and I'm going to start this side here R1 to R10 and uh, and this is the paste as we went through earlier on and you can see it's got a very nice fine nozzle and you can probably see now how much I shake this is my non shaking hand by the way uh, this is my shooting hand so uh, there we are um, so that's the paste I'm using there and it's just a case now of adding a tiny amount to each one of the pads 